the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light unto them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Dayspring is an effort to be in touch with good people who love God and who believe that the Bible is His Word. Dayspring is brought to you by your neighbors from churches of Christ in this area. And now, visit with us as we draw near to God. We're glad you're here. Thank you for being our guest today. Dayspring is the name of our program. It is a name that was used to refer to Jesus in the New Testament. He is our day spring from on high. We take this as an opportunity to open God's book, read from it, and think about it, and use it in our lives. We're delighted you've chosen to be our guest today. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel, that Old Testament prophet who lived in captivity, Ezekiel chapter 18, I shall read verse 31, and we'll let that be our starting place today. That verse reads like this, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? An interesting passage of Scripture. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart, a new spirit. Needless to say, there is the need for a new heart. When I read passages like this one in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, uh, verse 9, where God said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That heart needs to be changed, doesn't it? A new heart is needed. And what causes that heart to be like that? Well, sin. Sin is the cause of that damaged heart. In the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, the Bible says, Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they, they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. From whence do they come? The Lord said they come out of your heart. The heart needs to be redone. It needs to be changed. This people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 13 and verse 15 as he quoted from an Old Testament passage. In Acts chapter 8, we are introduced to a man named Simon. Simon became a Christian, but then he lapsed back into sin. His old ways came back on him. And when the apostle Peter addressed him, verse 21 in Acts chapter 8, Peter said, Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You have a heart problem, Simon. Even though it's manifested itself in this outward way, it starts in your heart. 
There is a need for a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart, a new spirit. That's what Ezekiel called for in chapter 18 and verse 31. A new heart and a new spirit. The words of David, the 51st Psalm, verse 10. David prayed to God and said, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. He's asking God to help him. I need a clean heart, and I need a right spirit, and I know that that must come from God. In the second chapter of Acts, the apostle Peter preached a powerful sermon in which he convinced his hearers that Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The Bible says when Peter had finished that sermon in Acts 2 at verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were pricked in their heart. Their heart was touched. Their heart was made over by the preaching of the gospel. In Acts chapter 16, Paul came to the city of Philippi. He had the opportunity to preach down by the side of a river to a group of ladies, women. And the Bible says at verse 14 of that chapter, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. Her heart was opened. It was opened as the result of her hearing Paul's preaching. And that heart having been opened, she said, I want to do, Paul, what you're calling on me to do. I want to become a Christian. So uh, a new heart is needed. That's what our text cries out for. A new heart and a new spirit. James, James chapter 4. In James chapter 4 at verse 8, James uh, gave this admonition. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. James's admonition was for the people to whom he wrote to purify their hearts. That's what we need. We need pure hearts. So in Matthew 5, in the Lord's Sermon from the Mount, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. My ability to see God through the eye of faith, my ability to recognize his presence with me, my ability to feel his companionship, all goes back to the idea of being pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So in 1 Peter 1 at verse 22, Peter wrote, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Love with a pure heart, unmixed, with contaminants. There's no contamination mixed in it. It's pure. It's altogether loyal and just and pure. And so again, back to our text in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 31. The words were, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Oh, my friend, that may be my need. That may be your need. We need a new heart. We need a new spirit. From whence shall it come? 
Well, one thing's for sure. We reach a point where we must realize that we cannot do that on our own. We cannot accomplish that mission ourselves, by ourselves. Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 13, uh, there is a passage of Scripture, uh, verse 23. Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, can the, can, the can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard, his spots? Now those questions were asked to stir their minds. We cannot change the color of our skin. And a leopard certainly can't do anything about the spots that he wears. <clears throat> Depends on something else, somebody else, beyond them. And our spiritual condition if we are going to try to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, as the saying goes, we shall find that that's an impossible thing to do. We cannot do this on our own. There must be help that comes from God. John chapter 15, verse 1. The Lord said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Listen, now ye are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Excuse me. What is it can make us clean? The word of my Lord. It is a cleansing agent. <clears throat> Jesus said, my word will cleanse you. But as we continue along that same line of thinking, in John 17 and verse 17, <clears throat> when Jesus prayed to his father, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Do I need to be cleansed? Do I need to be sanctified? I cannot accomplish that apart from the word of God. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, we're taught to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is the sword with which we fight our spiritual battles, the only offensive sword the Lord has given us. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. If I am to create a new heart in me, it will be because of the Word of God and its power. Acts chapter 15 Peter said, men and brethren, you know how a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And then Peter said this about them, God has put no difference between us and them, having purified their hearts by faith. Question, Peter. How were the hearts of those Gentile people changed? How were they made pure? Peter said it was by faith. He put no difference between us and them having purified their hearts by faith. Faith is what purifies. Faith is what changes our heart and makes it new. Well, how can I obtain that faith? I obtain that faith from the Word of God. Romans 10 and verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. It comes from no other source. John wrote, <clears throat> Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe. 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that believing you might have life through his name. How can I believe? John said you can believe by reading the evidence that I provided you in this account of the life of Christ. My heart needs to be changed. My heart can be changed as a result of imbibing the Word of God. The 19th Psalm, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. God's Word, that's what it takes to change me. Create in me a new heart, a clean heart, O God, or renew a night right spirit within me. That's what David said. And that's accomplished by the Word of God. The Word of God enables God to work in me. The God of our fathers can work in my heart and change it if I imbibe his word, the wisdom that I find, that I find therein. Perhaps it is a good thing to ask, what is the heart? We keep talking about having a new heart. What is it? Well, it's not that physical heart that pumps our blood. They wear out. Sometimes they can be replaced. But we're talking about another kind of a heart. Sometimes the heart is spoken of in the Bible as our intellect. That is, our ability to know things. Galatia, uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. The Bible says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. According to Moses in that verse, those people were thinking with their hearts. That's what the intellect does. It thinks. It has the power to know things. So, in Matthew 13 and verse 15, Jesus said, This people's heart is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart. The heart is what understands. Thus, it is a part of our intellect, our ability, our ability to know things. In Mark chapter 2, at verse 6, the Bible says, There were certain of the scribes sitting there, reasoning, in their hearts. We reason, we think, we understand. That's our ability to know things. We know things. Romans 10 and verse 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We believe with our heart. That's a part of our intellect. Acts 8 and verse 37. As they went on their way, they came to a certain water. The eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip answered, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And so, my friend, <clears throat> the heart which must be changed, the heart is our intellect, our ability to know things. It thinks, it reasons. It understands. It believes. The heart is also the part of us that feels our emotions, our ability to feel things. Romans 10 and verse 1, Paul said, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. It's a desire that comes from the heart. The heart is able to feel that it desires. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's an emotion. I love God with my heart. I desire with my heart. Proverbs 3 and verse 5, Solomon said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, 
That's the part of me that trusts. I trust God with my heart. I love God with my heart. I desire with my heart. All of that is our emotions. Our ability to feel things. We have an ability to know things. We have an ability to feel things. And finally, the heart is our willpower, our ability to do things. Hebrews 4 and verse 12, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Intentions come from the heart. That's our willpower, our ability to do things. I intend to do it. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, Paul said, Every man as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. I purpose with my heart. I intend with my heart. That's my willpower at work. And the Bible says that I obey from my heart. Uh, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. God be thanked ye were the servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. From what source does obedience spring? It comes from the heart. That's the same thing that enables me to intend and purpose. That's my ability to do things, my willpower. Now, that's what needs to be changed. My ability to think, my ability to feel, and my ability to do, all of those need to be changed. And so, when I turn back in my Bible to Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, uh, Jesus said to Paul, here's why I'm sending you to the Gentiles, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. Their eyes are closed, not physically speaking, but in a spiritual sense, their eyes were closed. They couldn't know anything. They could not learn anything because their eyes were closed. And Jesus said to Paul, I'm sending you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Uh, Beginning at verse 3, Paul wrote this about our ability to know things. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ which is the image of God, should shine unto them. Need the light of the gospel. Our our ability to know can be changed. Thus, a new heart. Our ability to feel can be changed. Thus, a new heart. Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, at verse uh, uh, 21, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If my treasure is in the right place, my heart will be in the right place too. Paul said, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Affections, that's my ability to feel. I set my affections right. I've changed my heart. The willpower, the power to do. Jesus talked about a man who had a son in Matthew chapter 21. He sent that son to work 
And uh, here's what uh, was said about that in chapter 21. <clears throat> At verse 18, uh, <clears throat> 28, excuse me. A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. Now there, he had his willpower changed. He went from saying, I won't go, to going. So our heart needs to be changed. That means to change our intellect. That means to change our emotions. That means to change our will. A new heart is what we need. We need a new heart. Numbers in the Old Testament. Uh, God, uh, through Moses, made water to come out of a rock. It gushed forth from that rock. God can also penetrate our hearts. A rock's hard, but, but God is able to penetrate our heart, and uh, the gospel can work great wonders for us. So in the 105th Psalm, uh, speaking of that, at verse 41, uh, the psalmist said, He opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran in a dry place as a river. God can open our hearts like he opened that rock through his word, creating me a new heart, a clean heart. I need a new heart. Thank you for letting me share these Bible thoughts today. Until the next time, may the goodness of God be yours in full measure. You've been watching Dayspring. Dayspring is brought to you by your friends and local area churches of Christ. To request a free CD of today's lesson, you may contact us at Dayspring, Post Office Box 453, Tupelo, Mississippi, 38802-0453. There is no cost for this offer. You will not be asked for financial support. You can also phone your request toll-free at one 866 842-4139 or you can go to our website at dayspringtv.com Thank you for visiting with us on Dayspring. May your joy be full. May the peace of God rule in your hearts and may the light of Christ brighten heaven's way. <laughs>